activity a little bit, but today I'm going to focus on the destructive activities. 30 years ago, Prime Minister Hun Sen set priority to rebuild the country. He said he did four things in order to rebuild Cambodia. Road, electricity, electricity, water, and human resources. Today, after 30 years, the four priorities still stand, still hold correct. So as such, the government of Cambodia has allocated a major budget to rebuild, reality our road networks, our infrastructure. Our focus, our focus was to start with the integration, connectivity between Phnom Penh capital city to the provincial capital. And after uh, 30 years of internal conflict, road has been damaged, bridge beams are blown up, railway has been destroyed and so on. So in order to integrate the country together, you know, after the, the, the Khmer Rouge laid down their arm, we need to integrate all the people of Cambodia, all the provinces to the capital city. So we've done that. But we done it in a quick way, you know, from a dirt road to what we call DBST, uh, double uh, uh, autonomous uh, service treatment. The quality is not as good. One of those I listened to Governor Watanabe, it's correct to look at the total cost of the project, including the construction plus the maintenance. But at the time, Cambodian did not have the budget to build quote unquote quality road by using asphalt concrete. It's good, expensive, less maintenance, but we don't have enough budget to do so. To do quick in order to integrate, connect the capital city of Phnom Penh to the provinces. So the first stage, we built on a DBSD, very, very thin, okay, layer, but at least we move from dirt road to a paved road. So that first stage is done. Second stage now, we can start, start upgrading from DBSD to the asphalt concrete and also build a new road using asphalt concrete, no longer DBSD. Because DBSD lasts the life, DBSD lasts only five to eight years. And so some of the road that we built has already been destroyed. So now we change to the asphalt country. The ASEAN Highway, we believe that we need to complete the ASEAN Highway number one, connecting China, Myanmar, Thailand to Vietnam. Like uh, uh, Mrs. Sulipisavan mentioned, is that we need to connect within the ASEAN community. So we play our role, we sit right in the middle between Thailand and Vietnam. So we must complete that ASEAN Highway number one, which we already did. Right now, it's only two lane road, but right now through JICA support and the Champion Yen loan, we will enlarge that ASEAN Highway number one from two lane to four lane. And that likely to be finished by 2023. Japanese government also provided us with the grant to build the Mekong Bridge because uh, to cross to Vietnam you had to cross the Mekong Bridge. Before you had to go through ferry, waste a lot of time waiting for the ferry. But today the bridge has been completed through the grant uh, from Japan, and Japanese uh, uh, JICA is in the process of doing a field study to also build expressway connecting Phnom Penh to the border of Vietnam. Again, so this is ASEAN Highway number one. ASEAN Highway number 11, connecting Laos to deep sea port of Sea Well, because Laos is a landlocked country. So we like to provide the access to our deep sea port. So we are completed the construction of uh, the ASEAN Highway number 11, connecting Laos to the seaport. ASEAN Highway number 123, connecting the Southern co uh, Economic Corridor from Trat Province in Thailand to our deep seaport. That has been completed. Again, that DBSC. But today, we're going to resurface that road using the AC. That Southern Economic Corridor. Talk about the expressway. We do not have expressway in Cambodia today to connect our economic pole, Phnom Penh, to Sinoville, 
which is our deep sea port, which is another economic port, on the two-lane road. And as you know, two-lane road, when all the people live along the road, take us around 230 dollars, I think about five plus hours. They have a cow, they have a buffalo crossing the road. So it takes a long time. So we are negotiating right now with the investor on a BOT basis, the bill operate transfer of this expressway from Phnom Penh to Sydney Port. We also engage with the private sector in operating our airport on a BOT basis. So Phnom Penh Airport, Sydney Airport, Sydney Airport is operated based on a BOT basis. We have the ability, we probably can go get a soft loan, concessional loan from JPEG, from China, and so on and so forth, but there's also a limit as to how much you can borrow. What is your debt to GDP ratio? We cannot continue just borrow, so we engage the private sector to participate on a BOT basis for the infrastructure project in Cambodia. Now, there's one project, the flagship project of, uh, of ASEAN, uh, from the uh, uh, second gen, uh, so it's one that I alluded to, a big 600 project, but one of them is a, a flagship project called SKRL, Singapore Kunming Railing Project, that connects Singapore to Malaysia, to Thailand, to Cambodia, to Vietnam, and all the way to Kunming, China. But the two missing links, and they are in Cambodia, one from Poi Pet to Sisapon, uh, uh, which is around 50 kilometers, but that connection will be completed by the end of this year. So by the end of this year, we can connect the Royal Railway of Cambodia to the State Railway of Thailand. So good and serve, uh, good and people can travel, can uh, transport through the uh, railway from Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand to Cambodia. Another missing link in between Cambodia and Vietnam, around 257 kilometer rail link. And we are now going to build the spur from that location to Ho Chi Minh City. The question is that who will help finance this project? If it's a standalone project for Cambodia, financially it's not viable at all to invest in this 250 kilometer, 57 kilometer railing to, to Vietnam. But so what are we going to do? Now the ASEAN leaders agree in 1995 that this project should be completed in 2015, but the day is not even started yet. No money. <coughs> should be more pay for itself for the project, or the country in ASEAN that will benefit from SKRL, China, Thailand, uh, Laos, Vietnam, also have paid for the project. And if you rely on private sector, no one, no company will invest in the railway because it's going to cost you a billion dollars, financially it's not viable. So we need to figure out how to work together within ASEAN to get this project SKRL off the ground. While this uh, former Secretary General uh, Sir mentioned about uh, using the, the, the National Reserve, that might be uh, you know, an alternative to, uh, to the ASEAN Infrastructure Fund, we have one for a billion that you mentioned, now we have AIIP, and we have Japanese government that's uh, uh, announced the 200 billion dollars. We have Civil World Fund, the 40 billion US dollars Civil World Fund initiative from China, that also will help. But again, it's not enough. We have to engage the private sector, private sector to, to participate in the infrastructure uh, of, of, of ASEAN. Governors of another day mentioned about the soft side of it, we talk about hardware, physical infrastructure. But the issue today, also the cross-border transport agreement. The good is stuck at the border. We need to accelerate the single window, single inspection at the border. When good cross to Thailand, we don't have to inspect by Thai custom and Cambodian custom. When good cross to Vietnam between Cambodia, we shouldn't be inspected by Cambodian custom and also by the Vietnamese custom, vice versa. So we need to work on that for a single window, single inspection, and agree on trade facilitation by removing all impediment at the border to facilitate uh, uh, trade. 
So that's all, you know, we, we, we continue to invest heavily in the infrastructure. We are working to, to, to eliminate, uh, you know, mention, yesterday I mentioned uh, non-terrorist measure in Cambodia in order to allow free, free flow of goods and services uh, to, uh, to the region. Cambodian government committed to invest around 12 billion US dollars in the next 10 years in building the, the infrastructure. So far, the, you know, the, uh, we do not have the PPP project. We love to get the PPP project off the ground. However, we do not know how to prepare a bankable PPP project. So we need support, maybe best practices from other countries to tell us that here you can prepare the bankable PPP project to submit to potential investors. Maybe the role of ADB, uh, ADB should help us play, so you know, come up with the bankable project. If you don't have the bankable projects, we can go all we want to talk about uh, you know, uh, the private, uh, public private partnership. It's very difficult. We need to be able to present to them the bankable project. So today, for Kimori, we just wait, sit and wait for investors to come to us and say, oh, I like to build the expressway on a BOT basis. Or oh, I like to build a bridge on a BOT basis. But we should come up with a complete project ourselves, the bankable that we broadcast, and then we submit to a private investor to invest in the project. So once again, so we, we appreciate uh, very much the support from, so from our from partners. Japan play a major role in the infrastructure in Cambodia. Since 1993, they upgrade the road, they upgrade our seaport, Road networking, traffic congestion also, traffic uh, congestion in Phnom Penh also, we get support from, from China. Now we are working with China also to build the automated AGT, automated guideway transit, just like in Japan. So hopefully by 2023, we should have that connecting Phnom Penh to the airport. That again costs us around 700 million US dollars. Bus system in Cambodia, in Phnom Penh, also need help. We need to you know, build uh, the public transportation to alleviate the congestion in the capital. So overall, the thanks of the Bob partners, the AIB, the ADB, JICA, Bilateral, Thailand also give a soft loan, Vietnam give a soft loan, Korean government give a soft loan, Japanese government give a soft loan, and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, we need a private sector to really help participate in building infrastructure in Asia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.